So hi guys, we continue our journey into complex numbers and today we're going to be looking at Dumas theorem. And I think this is quite fascinating, the background behind this, uh, this mathematician and then this very simple but very powerful result. So let's take a quick look at this theorem and some applications. Now, while researching, uh, you know, the uh, content for this video, I came across, I said, let me just have a look at this. And this is basically how I teach as well. And that is, you've got to know a little bit about the man or woman behind the mathematics or the science. And I think that is so, so important that we know this. I mean, there's so few people that have heard of Emi Nuda, for instance beautiful symmetry based theorems knew the symmetries you know richard feynman you know we, we have heard of isaac newton albert einstein and the like but uh, richard feynman for instance jocelyn bell i mean these are beautiful people with beautiful uh, contributions to mathematics and physics you know we, we've never heard of them and it's it's so unjust so abraham de Moore. Uh, this guy was quite an accomplished mathematician who rubbed shoulders with the likes of Isaac Newton and uh, um, many of the world-renowned mathematicians and physicists around that time. Edmund Halley, for instance, would, would, would have been one of them as well. But this guy's fascinating, you know, uh, he's, he's done quite a bit of work, but he's also known for predicting his own death. And that is interesting. Not his own death in the way he died, but the day he died. And uh, the story goes that around age 87, he had figured out that he was sleeping an extra 15 minutes per day. Um, and using that and an application of the arithmetic uh, uh, series basically predicted the day that he was going to die. And the way he did this is just a summation and predicted that the day he sleeps for 24 hours would be the day he passes on, which is exactly what he predicted. Fascinating, absolutely fascinating. So um, the story goes that uh, it wasn't the mathematics that actually killed him. So read up, you know, it's amazing that when you look at the background of these mathematicians, the scientists, the physicists, uh, which who contributed to these amazing fields of knowledge, you, 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 you appreciate better the work uh, associated with these great minds. So let's quickly have a look at this theorem and some simple applications. So the theorem itself is pretty straightforward. It goes something like uh, cos theta plus j sine theta raised to the power n. That is nothing more than cos n theta plus j sine. I like to put this in brackets with the n and the n there all right so it's like wow this is amazing and I, what i like about this and this is very very powerful in mathematics and that is if you look here for instance i mean n could be two three four five six seven eight whatever and if you look on the other side the powers of the cos and sine um, are basically one each so basically it's linear so you're going from something that's quadratic or cubic or fourth order to something that's linear. And that is very, very useful in mathematics. So just remind yourself, you know, we did the exponential form of the a complex number. Um, we would have had something like e to the j theta, all right? What is that? That was roughly cos theta plus j sine theta all right so then we can clearly say that e to the j n theta is cos n theta plus j sine n theta now where is this useful how is this useful well one of the applications and, and i like this because it will bring us full circle to what we learned in school way back when you were like what grade 10 maybe so let's just quickly have a look at that and take you back in time. Okay, so let's have a look at this the question over here. So you got something like cos theta plus j sine theta all squared. And what we want to do is expand this 
in terms of powers of cos and sine theta. So from the theorem, that's pretty straightforward. We're going to have cos theta plus j sine theta and it's just going to be cos 2 theta plus j sine 2 theta. So just remember that. And that's 2 over there. But let's just go back to um, to grade 10, even primary school, you know, when you square binomial, no is this we're getting here. What can we write this as? That is nothing more than cos squared theta plus j2 sine theta cos theta. Now here you've got to be very careful because you got plus, this is on the right last term, all squared. So you're going to have cos squared theta plus j2 sine theta cos theta j squared minus 1, so the minus sine squared theta. Now have a look at this. I'm going to write this in a cuter way. Cos squared, sine squared. That's all real, right? No j's there. Plus j2 sine theta cos theta. So that's just basically squaring that. But according to Dumois theorem, well, ho, what is that equal to? We can just write this as cos 2 theta plus j sine 2 theta equals to the right hand side over here. And you can see clearly where I'm going with this is so easy. So if we equate, you know, this is real parts. If we compare the real parts, the real part here is cos 2 theta. And the real part on the other side is cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Huh. That looks familiar. Yes, it's the identity that we learned way back in grade 10. Yep, let's look at the imaginary part. Sine 2 theta equals 2. 2 sine theta cos theta. Yes, grade 10, we did this. So we have two fundamental trig identities using Dumois theorem. It's brilliant. The power of this is amazing. But it goes more, it's more than that, it's more than that, it's more, more, more than that. And later on, when we're looking at integration, for instance, I'm going to ask you to integrate cos squared theta or sine squared theta. We can write this as in terms of cos 2 theta, we linearize and we make the problem simple, beautiful, elegant, excellent. Let's try something else. What about cubed? So, are you familiar with cubing a uh, binomial? I mean, if you had to cube this out, well, firstly, when you was there, well, how do we change color there? That is nothing more than cos 3 theta plus j sine of 3 theta. Peter, just remember three coming from there. All right. Now, how do we cube this thing? Cos theta plus j sine theta cubed. Here you've got to be very careful. So we know obviously we've got to cube the first term, which is cos cubed theta plus three. Now watch this. This would be cos squared theta times second, which is j sine theta plus 3 cos theta j sine squared theta. And the last one I'll write is j sine cubed theta. Now we can take care of the j's. This is cos cubed theta plus j 3 cos squared theta sine theta of taking care of that plus no plus j now here you have to be very careful and this is a mistake i've actually made because it's just not sine squared and this was deliberate this is not sine squared that comes out the square should be on the outside there all right so what we end up with is j times j is a minus sign. three cos theta sine square theta and the last one is j cubed what is j cubed 
That's j times j, which is minus 1, times j, which is minus j sine two theta. Okay. But that, dear friends, is cos 3 theta plus j sine 3 theta. So cos 3 theta plus j sine 3 theta. <laughs> That's out. And uh, then we just compare. So if you look at the real part, just give you an idea. The real part on this side is cos 3 theta equals to what's the real part here? There. That involves j, we leave that. Then it's this one. So we've got cos cubed theta minus 3 cos theta sine squared theta. And if you compare the imaginary parts on either side, you don't count the j, so you just got a formula for sine 3 theta. Sine 3 theta, there's the imaginary part, which is 3 cos squared. That's a 3. Sine theta, and then there's a minus sine cube theta. And there we have a formula for cos 3 theta and a formula for sine 3 theta. This is using the Moas theorem. So you're going to be asking, hang on now, how did you know to expand this, the cubic? And that's what I'm going to explore in the next slide. Okay, so let's spend some time just thinking about how we expand these binomials. So we're going to look at Pascal's triangle. And this will help us to expand these binomials. So if you look here, there's a beautiful pattern that you could see the elegance of this. So the first line basically is a plus b to the power of zero, when a, where a and b are non-zero, so are not zero. So that is one. Then the next one is a plus b to the power of one, which is a plus b. No prizes for guessing the next one, and that is a plus all squared, look at this, it's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So it's giving us, you see, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1. So let's look at the next one. a plus b cubed, what is that equal to? That's going to be a cubed plus 3 a squared b plus 3 a b squared plus b cubed. So there's the 1, there's the 3, there's the 3, and there's the 1. 1, 3, 3, 1. So how do I know that it's a squared b and then a b squared? Well, if you look very carefully, the powers of each of these guys, look at there, power 3, 3. The last one, 3. 3. Look at this cross term here, I'm going to call it. The power there is 2 and the power of b is 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. Power of a is 1, 1 plus 2 is 3. And there we have it. So now I can basically cube um, the binomial. And now I want you to write out for me a plus b to the power 4. Would you be able to actually work that out? Let's just see. First term is obviously a to the power of 4. The next term, there's a 4. So that's going to be a 4. And then you're going to have a, b, cubed. And the reason for that is because they've got to add up to 4 plus 6, a squared, b squared, plus 4. And this would become a cubed, b. And the last term is going to be b to the power of 4. Does that make sense? Sorry, there's a 3 there. Makes sense there. You see? So that makes it very useful to remember the expansion of these binomials. So if you go back to the previous slide, 
and I had something like watch this cos theta plus j sine theta all cubed that I could have easily written as cos cube theta plus 3 cos squared theta b the b this is the whole thing is j sine theta and then plus now here you're going to be 3 a is cos theta and you're going to be very very careful here remember it's j sine theta squared and the last term is j sine theta cubed so please have a look at that uh, what i've done here and in the previous slide and make sure you understand that keep keep this in mind it's j sine theta all squared and if it's j sine theta all squared j times j is minus one so it makes this entire term real please please focus on that so i thought this was really cool the moas theorem you know just expanding uh, uh, cos theta plus j sine theta raised to the power n it helps us linearize things it also helps us derive some um, trig identities that we're familiar with when we were grade 10. we are also going to use this theorem to solve complex equations so i can't wait to see you on the other side of 11 whatever that means pretty cool stuff man